sometimes when you watch Question Period, you see Justin Trudeau throw a tantrum, but all the time you see Pierre Polyev himself or the conservative bench absolutely obliterate the liberals or even Justin Trudeau right to his face. And occasionally the conservatives cross a a line under you know parliamentary language or things are allowed to say or how they say it and they get kicked out and that's what we're going to start off with we'll go back to another video everybody before we get into it i do <clears throat> before before we get it but before we get into it i want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already sorry i'm getting a little excited and i hope you consider turning post notifications on so you can actually be notified of upcoming videos we are almost at a hundred thousand subscribers here on house of canada which is absolutely insane and uh, i've got a very good video compiled for you folks today uh uh, just like I said in the in the first few seconds of this video, we are going to start off with a conservative MP. Well, there's a debate going on, Pierre and Trudeau, Pierre and Trudeau, and then another conservative MP says something that he's not supposed to be saying. He says the truth. He speaks the truth and nothing but the truth. And he gets kicked out for it because it crosses a line uh, for what they are allowed to say, or in this case, not allowed to say within Parliament. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the clip. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. As this Prime Minister raises taxes on food, brings back malnutrition, brings in record-smashing food bank use, the best he can come up with is a bunch of scripted talking points from junior staffers in the PMO. That is outrageous. Canadians are going hungry as Christmas is just around the corner. And a common-sense Conservative bill to take the tax off farmers and food could have helped solve the problem. Why did he manipulate and intimidate senators to keep the tax on the food and make our people go hungry right before Christmas? We have an opposition leader who is so ideologically opposed to protecting the planet that he's willing to take parliament hostage and stop parliament from supporting workers, stop, stop parliament from supporting families, and stop parliament from supporting Ukraine as well. The leader of the opposition has threatened to ruin the holidays if his ideological demands are not met. Let us be clear, we will keep working for Canadians while the Conservative leader is only fueled by the sound of his own voice and has no real plan for this country. We will never back down from supporting Canadians. I know for a fact that farmers are asking that minister to axe the carbon tax. That PM promised that the Senate would be independent, but the actions this past week prove that that is a complete farce. We know he bullied his senators. The PM himself was on the phone over the weekend telling them they had to gut Bill C-234. The Prime Minister lied and his minions continue to lie about oh, wow. I did knows full well that you can't use that word. Yeah. I would say the Honourable Member should retract that and apologize. The Honourable Member Battle River Crowfoot. Mr. Speaker, I will not apologize to that Prime Minister when he continues to lie about the impact of the carbon tax and the local independence of the Senate. I'm asking the Honourable Member to apologize for the second time and retract that word. The Honourable Member knows full well you cannot use that word in this chamber. So this is the last, uh, this is the last opportunity. The Honourable Member of Battle River Crowfoot, will you be retracting that? It's the truth. It's the truth. Mr. I will not apologize to the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Curick, would you mind leaving us today?
let me fill, let me fill this. I have to name you for the disregard of the authority of the chair. Pursuant to the authority granted by me, standing order 11, I order you to withdraw from the house from any participation by video conference for the remainder of this sitting day. But he did, uh, he did leave. Next up, we do have a bit of an older clip, but this is a very good one because Pierre Polyev, you can tell it's an older clip because Pierre's wearing his glasses. Uh, Pierre compares Justin Trudeau to a shady contractor. Now, this is something that we all come across at one point or not in our lives of just some greasy person who's in it for the money and not in it for the cause. And well, Pierre Polyev holds nothing back. He just starts sparring with Justin Trudeau and accuses him. And it stays within the guise of parliamentary privilege of things that he is allowed to say. So he doesn't get kicked out per se, but Justin Trudeau sure would like to see Pierre get kicked out one of these days, but that's not the case. He gets his point across and it's uh, it's a bit of a bloodbath. So I hope you enjoy it. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the second clip. Just look at the facts. Canada has the fewest houses per capita of any country in the G7, even though we have the most land to, to build on. Why? We rank 64th in the OECD in the time it takes to get a building permit. Government red tape adds as much as $650,000 to each house in some cities. And the Prime Minister has made it worse by giving the gatekeepers who block the building more money. Why? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, this goes to the heart of the announcement we made last week on the Housing Accelerator Fund, which does work directly with municipalities to accelerate uh, the, the delivery and the construction of uh, affordable housing. Uh, now, Mr. Speaker, what uh, the member opposite would have you believe is that uh, doing nothing to address the housing crisis would have somehow made it better. He <laughs> criticizes us for the investments of billions of dollars in housing over the past years. Just think, if things are expensive now, how much worse it would have been had we had a Conservative government that continued to cross its arms and cut services to Canadians for the past eight years. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to imagine what prices would have been were I making the decisions, because when I was the Housing Minister, the average mortgage payment and the average rent payment were half of what they are now. Yeah. It's called history. Next thing, the member opposite is going to complain that uh, housing prices are higher today than they were in my father's time as Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. You look at his promise to make it easier for Canadians to get a home, and since that time, the payments have actually doubled. You listen to him rattle off the billions he's spent to achieve that failure. He kind of reminds you of that shady contractor who promises you that he'll build you a brand new home, but the cost just keeps going up and up and up, and the house never actually gets built, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader is actually arguing that less investments in Canadians, less investments alongside municipalities uh, and, and provinces, uh, fewer, uh, fewer, fewer programs to support Canadians would somehow have solved this problem. That's the problem with Conservatives. They think that cuts can create growth. They think that fewer investments in Canadians will get people to step, pull themselves up by their bootstraps and succeed. Mr. Speaker, we believe in investing in the middle class and people working hard to join it, and that's why Canadians are doing uh, better than they were before. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. In other words, we should forgive him for failing because he fails expensively. <laughs> the Prime Minister has failed to make housing affordable even after 89 billion precious tax dollars have been spent on that failure. I've suggested to him we should link the number of dollars a big city gets to the number of houses they allow to be built to incentivize more building. He doesn't like that idea. Well, he doesn't like results, but here's a, another idea. We build transit stations with federal money. In the most successful transit and housing jurisdictions on earth, there are apartments next to those stations. Will the Prime Minister require every federally funded transit station have high density apartments so that our seniors and young people can live right next to the bus or train? Yeah. Honourable Prime Minister. 
congratulate the Leader of the Opposition for actually talking about concrete ideas. Uh, for a long time, his only recommendation to help Canadians was invest in Bitcoin. Uh, that'll help you avoid inflation. But now he's talking about uh, you know, credible, uh, credible opportunities to help Canadians. What's nice, though, Mr. Speaker, is uh, the idea of density around transit hubs is something that we're already moving forward on and have uh, invested in over the past few years. We know how important is that. But I will remind uh, the member opposite that in order to invest in density around transit hubs, one has to invest in public transit, which his government never did, which we have continued to do to record levels. From the opposition. The difference is, like housing, we actually got it built. He doesn't like that idea. Well, how about this one? He's got 37,000 large, many of them largely empty buildings, big, ugly buildings. Why doesn't he sell off 15% of them so we can convert those into affordable housing for our young people? Yeah. Part of a question period, an answer period, needs to be taking yes for an answer. And I said yes. Not only do we like the idea of density around public transit spaces, we've been doing it for years. We've been putting it in our agreements with municipalities as we invest historic amounts in public transit. Now, the government, the uh, former Conservative government, refused to invest in any infrastructure larger than a doorknob uh, or an economic action plan sign. Uh, we're continuing to invest in significant public transit including with a permanent public transit fund, uh, something that the Conservatives have again campaigned against. Their very first infrastructure, pro their very first infrastructure project was to uh, install a, a doorknob in the Prime Minister's office when they, when they took office, Mr. Speaker. That, folks, is where we're going to end today's video. Now, before I do let you go, I would like to encourage you one last time to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. House Commons does resume tomorrow. Our question period resumes tomorrow. So I hope you, uh, consider to to I hope you consider turning post notifications on so you can actually be notified of the live streams. We do get lots of viewers, and uh, there's a lot lot of anticipation for it coming back from this two week break and summer uh summer period is is coming up here where they they take off for the summertime so there's a very limited amount of time for question period to actually resume so i hope you join the live streams i look forward to seeing you guys in the chat participating with the community thanks for watching don't forget to smash the like button on your way out and i will see you all in the next one bye for now